you know, I compliment Coach McDermott and the Buffalo Bills for for victory in a hard fought game. Um, you know, I appreciate the efforts of our guys in there. I just told them that, um, but efforts don't get it done. Um, so let's talk tangibly about why we weren't successful. Um, you know, we spotted them early um, in the football game uh, via the turnovers. Can't come into an environment like this versus a playoff caliber team and, and turn the ball over like that and, and, um, and expect to be competitive, man. We spotted them. Uh, we fought back in it um, over the course of the, the game. Uh, we cut it to seven. Um, and was excited about that. Um, then we gave up a touchdown drive. When you get a major penalty within a drive on defense, that's usually going to produce points. Um, and that was the case. Um, and it put them back up by 14. And, and the rest is academic. And so um, I'm appreciative of the efforts. Um, but it's not mystical. Uh, we didn't do what was required to win tonight. We didn't take care of the ball. We didn't get, it, get the ball from them enough in an environment like this and thus uh, the score. Had a couple of injuries. Joey Porter, Allen Robinson are in the concussion protocol. Uh, Pat Frymuth had an ankle, um, had limited availability there toward the end of the game. Questions? Mike, that second turnover again, Josh goes 52 yards on that scramble. I mean, that, that one was really hurtful. No question. Uh, but we talked about quarterback mobility and what he and they are capable of. Um, it probably not the story of the game was the mobility, but the turnover component, you know. Um, Got to do better. Mike, what kept you from getting a consistent ground game offensively? Um, their efforts. Um, they did a really good job of packing the line of scrimmage and, um, you know, forcing us to throw the ball more vertically, probably a little bit more vertically than we wanted to. We adjusted. We started doing that, and we started moving the football. Um, so credit to them. Like what, did they do something different with their tight ends, or did what you had planned just not work the way you hoped? You know, we've had our issues with tight end matchups over the second half of the year. Um, we adjusted in game, uh, but they made some plays definitively early on. Mike, how much did you feel the loss of not having T.J. Watt out there? You know, I didn't think about it, to be quite honest with you. We knew all week he wasn't playing, and so we prepared with that mindset. And so I didn't waste any time thinking about what what wasn't at our disposal. Um, we had too much at our disposal and too many decisions and considerations to be made to waste time like that. How do you think Mason did after throwing that interception? I thought he was solid. I thought he was competitive. I thought his confidence was unshakable. I thought he you know, displayed the things that he displayed really for the last month or so. Anyone? Mike, you have a year left on your Well, you see the abrupt end to that, led by a question that I will not ask. Yeah. They were about to start talking about his contract, the coaching situation. We're not going to do that because that's one of the best head coaches in this sport. And Pittsburgh, be lucky to have him in that city leading that team. You hear some of those comments from your former coach, Mac. Yeah. What comes to mind as you look at this season holistically? I mean, it was not a straight line to this moment. Yeah. Quarterback changes, injuries, issues all over the place, and still – Playoff football in Pittsburgh. Yeah, I mean, if you think about playoffs and having the Pittsburgh Steelers in that conversation, let's go back to mid-November, probably would say, nah, they don't stand a chance. They have no shot, especially when you look at what was going on within their neighborhood. Their neighborhood is the AFC North. Mm -hmm. So many competitive teams at that time that were healthy and playing high-level football all seem to be in a good position to get into the playoffs more so than the Pittsburgh Steelers. But... Coaching chains, personnel moves, things like that led to an opportunity for the Pittsburgh Steelers to do what they did today, which was play in a playoff game. But as Mike Tomlin mentioned, he emphasized one thing I know about playoff football, just playing the game, you know, being involved in so many playoff opportunities and now watching as a fan like you guys are watching two things. Ha you have to do to win ball games: Get off to a fast start and protect the football. Mm -hmm. 
when you look at the nature of what we've watched during Super Wild Card Weekend, the teams that have won ball games, they've gotten off to pretty good starts, but most importantly, they protected the football. Yep. That's the common goal. That's the common need that you have to accomplish if you have any aspirations to move on to the next round. As, you, as Mike T mentioned, playing against the Buffalo Bills, one of the hottest teams in the National Football League, mm -hmm. in their territory, you cannot afford to spot them anything. That is the one sprinter you can't allow to get out his blocks before you get out of your blocks because you're not going to reel them in and run them down to cross the finish line before they do. That's that's unlikely. And that's what we saw in the first half. You talk about a first half fumble that gave the Bills prime position, field position to be in scoring range and they scored. You talked about another opportunity for Pittsburgh to put points on the scoreboard. The interception by Kair Elam in the end zone. Guess what? You took seven off the board from yourselves, mm -hmm. and they put seven on the board for them. A red zone turnover. 14-point turnaround. Yeah. All before halftime. And for them to go into halftime only down 14 points was a huge plus because they were still within reach to find a way to make the game competitive, in which they did. But guess what? Buffalo made the plays they needed to make to be able to pre prevail and win the ball game. That was a huge turnover because worst case scenario, if you don't turn the football over there, Joe, worst case, you can attempt the field goal. You put points on the, on the board. You put something mm -hmm. on the board. It was a lot of the big questions we were asking on a smaller, I won't say stage or moment, but uh, on a smaller scale here. How are they in this game? How are they still in this season? We're yeah. sort of the big questions, but you said it. Start fast, can protect the football, and control the game. That's exactly what Buffalo did in this moment. When you got a quarterback who gives it away, like Josh Allen does at times, unable to do that, maybe that is the final statement made here by Pittsburgh this season. Yeah. I need a couple more from you here you because got? the quarterback situation, and this is not alone an issue in Pittsburgh. Many places and many fan bases are asking, do we have the guy in the building right now? And if so, how do we foster mm -hmm. that talent to move forward? I'll ask both of those questions to you as it pertains to Pittsburgh. Do you have the guy in the building and how do you foster the talent moving forward? You know what? To be determined. To be determined, right? And let me answer your question by asking you a question, Joe, and asking, asking the, the viewers that are watching us a question. Mm -hmm. For the teams that are currently still in the playoffs, right? Process of elimination. Let's look at their quarterbacks, starting with the Buffalo Bills. Josh Allen, mm -hmm. go get her, right? CJ Stroud, go get her. Sign him up. Pat Mahomes, go get her. Jared Goff, this year, has been laying it down mm -hmm. the right way, right? Outside of Jared Goff, Jordan Love, right? You, so, you can survive without one, but you thrive when it comes one. to that position. And now when you look at what the Pittsburgh Steelers currently have in the building at the quarterback position, let's keep it real. There's only two guys you can talk about. It's Mason Rudolph mm -hmm. or Kenny Pickett. Do we visualize any one of those guys moving forward for the Pittsburgh Steelers, being able to emerge to be some of the quarterbacks that I just mentioned that are playing high-level football and doing so in a consistent rate? That's the question, because if you don't have that type of quarterback play in postseason play, you're going to have a short stay in playoff play. Mm -hmm. I feel like this for me, when I talk about playoff moments, I want to go to an extended stay, because that means I'm going to be around for quite some time. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't want to go to a five-star spot. Uh -huh. I need to go to an extended stay, because I plan on staying here for quite some time. That's the mindset for most... Or Every organization that plays in the National Football League in the playoffs, they want to have an extended state. Those quarterbacks that I mentioned, they're showing the ability to provide their organization with an extended state. So I'll say this. If you're going to keep those guys intact, those two players, Mason Rudolph and Kenny Pickett, and you're not going to go outside of the building to try to find your quarterback moving forward, it has to be a competition. I mean, you ask the it, question. You ask the question. Probably as a rhetorical, but I'll give you the yeah. answer. No, you don't. Because if you can't answer that as a yes right now, and you don't feel that way about one of these guys, I mean, indictment enough yeah. on Kenny Pickett but is that they rolled with Mason Rudolph. And there are talented minds in Pittsburgh that said Mitch Trubisky is a better quarterback than Mason Rudolph. That was wrong, yeah. but yeah. there were yeah. talent yeah. evaluators who said that. So it's my, hard to say that Mason Rudolph is the yes as well. So my rebuttal to that, you know, and I don't disagree with, with you based on what we've seen mm -hmm. compared to what other teams have at their disposal at the quarterback position. Then who, who is available? Like, what kind of move can you make? Do you go to Russell Wilson route? Because we know he will be available, mm -hmm. right? Do you go Good that route? How much, how, 
How much What's better? That gonna cost? Yeah, how much better is Russell compared to what you have in in, in a house at this stage in his career? Not to mention the price tag. Or what happens with Justin Fields? If the Chicago Bears decides to move on from Justin Fields and use their first overall selection on Caleb Williams or quarterback, but we think it should be, it will be Caleb Williams. What what what's that's going to cost? And how much more uh, improved is Justin Fields compared to the guys you already have in the building? They have a lot to really think about mm -hmm. during the offseason. When you talk about Omar Khan, the GM, uh, Mike Tomlin, and the rest of the folks there at the front office positions, they have a lot to think about because it starts and stops at the quarterback position. It wasn't like Kenny Pickett was playing bad. I mean, his, he has a above 500 winning record, but it's something about the offense that was a little stagnant from time. Certainly. And then in in comes Mason Rudolph and everything looked dramatically different. And you've always told me the players will tell you through their if play. If it was the right move. Who they believe in and if yes. it was the right move. Yeah. It was the right move in the short term for this team to get their team to the playoffs. But if we're talking about long, long term success, that answer might exist elsewhere. Mac, you know, we always appreciate your candor as it pertains to the Pittsburgh Steelers. No one keeps us in tap better than you do.